aftermarket turbocharger can change your truck drastically, both good and bad. And it's in this video we're going to talk about which one you should choose depending on what you want to see out of your truck. Where on the scale from stock to basketball do you sit on the turbo graph? It's very likely that if you're looking at turbocharger upgrades, you've already got a tune on your truck. But if for some reason you don't, consider one of these first. About 80 to 300 wheel horsepower is left on the table by the manufacturer depending on what truck you have. That means you don't need a physical upgrade to make a whole bunch more power. You can go with a tune instead and really wake your truck up. If you are already tuned, then yes, the factory turbocharger is your restriction. These turbochargers are often smaller than the fuel systems on modern trucks, which means adding a bigger turbocharger will give you increased horsepower. From here, you'd want to look at something like a VGT Plus style turbocharger, which is basically a Stage 1 or an OEM Plus style turbo. They still use the variable geometry turbocharger setup, which is what the factory system has to create a quick throttle response down low, acting like a small turbocharger, and then moving vanes inside to make it also act like a big turbocharger. These OEM Plus ones just add a little bit more up top so that you can see bigger horsepower numbers on wide open throttle. We've seen these things support 600 to 700 wheel horsepower with a little bit of supporting mods. An OEM Plus style VGT turbo will really wake up your truck. You'll still be able to use it as a daily driver, tow truck, or a day to day work rig. At the same time, you'll gain a lot more up top and you'll utilize all of your factory fuel system. And of course, with one of these OEM Plus style turbos, you can be looking at a set of injectors like this, making a bit more power and seeing what you can do. But even without supporting mods, one of those turbochargers on a big tune will have you knocking at the door of a transmission upgrade. And it's really at this point, when you start adding more power, you're gonna have to look at turbo upgrades along with the upgrades that go with them, like transmissions, fuel systems, injectors, high pressure pumps, lift pumps. From this point on, it's no longer a drop and play. It's a drop and see what else brakes. And hey, let's say that you don't actually want a VGT style turbocharger. You want the simplicity of a fixed turbo. You had a 12 valve Cummins, it had an HX35 that worked fine. You can do that as well by adding one of these to your truck. It's a pretty small turbocharger relative to big power units that we're seeing, but it's a non VGT turbo. So this will probably put you near in that four, five, 600 horsepower range, depending on your modifications in your tune. You'll lose your trans brake because your VGT is actually your trans brake, but you'll gain a lot in reliability. If you still have your EGR fitted to your truck, that soot that comes back through the turbocharger won't stick up the vanes. They're more simple, they're more reliable. People seem to like how the torque hits better because they spool really nicely and they give you that kind of like more of a hit because there's not a torque curve, there's a no boost then boost. These are kind of fun and they can give you that kind of power level, but because they're fixed, you either have to sacrifice top end power or low down response. A smaller turbocharger like this can still be used and you can still have that drivability to tow a trailer. You just won't notice quite as much linear power curve as a VGT style turbocharger. You would do this for reliability. Continuing on our quest for horsepower, let's say you put that beefy transmission in there and you put a bit more supporting mods in the truck, you're ready to make more, you're probably also going with a fixed rate turbocharger. 650 to 700 is realistically where we see VGTs no longer being the best choice. They cut out some of the top end power and that's not what you're going for. You wanna take that truck to Mexico late at night or you wanna go down to the drag strip. That's where you're gonna look at a fixed rate turbocharger, which is what three of the trucks at our shop that make more than 700 wheel horsepower all run. So what are you looking for then? Well, you wanna go with a bigger turbocharger that can make your top end. What you are sacrificing is you will not be able to tow with that truck. Let's say you're sitting on a slight incline, you have a gooseneck that's loaded up behind the truck. It would take you a thousand years to be able to get that truck spooled up. The converter spooling the turbo, you hear the turbo spooling up. And that's where compounds come in. You have your cake and you eat it too. The small turbo, especially if it's a VGT, so you still get that great throttle response and that awesome mid-range punch, which then spools up your big turbocharger, which feeds through the small one. It gives you exactly what you want from both turbochargers, that high-end power and that low-down to torque. You have five, six, seven, 800 horsepower, 900 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower trucks that drive like factory with compound chargers. It's really sweet because it does combine the best of both worlds. And even if you have a lower horsepower truck, our boss used to drive a 580 wheel horsepower truck with a set of compounds on a 6.7 power stroke. That thing sounded great because it just spooled the turbo all the time. Whether or not you were using it, it was a visceral experience to have compounds.
Is there a downside? Well, of course. You have to buy double of everything. You have two turbochargers, twice the piping, you have a whole completely different setup under the hood. It's all very complicated to have a compound turbo. You're doubling your chances of failures because you have twice the components. On top of that, it's a narrow market. If you wanna make six, seven, 800 horsepower, well, that's not a narrow market. There's lots of people who do, but to retain drivability, well, that's smaller. And especially if you wanna use the truck for regular duties like towing, Man, to buy a transmission that's rated for 900 horsepower while towing a trailer? That's a tall order. Then on the other end of the scale, if you want it to make you know, 400 to 600 horsepower, well, it's just as easily done with the VGT. Yeah, you don't have that awesome spooling noise as you're driving around as your big turbocharger is just waiting to be used and you can listen to it all the time. But is that worth the money to buy the second turbocharger? It's a hard sell. That isn't to say there isn't a market and that isn't to say I don't love them. It's just a harder sell. Now, you'll notice I haven't used any numbers. I haven't said 63 mil or 66 mil or 80 mil or 0.72 AR. And that's because it's impossible to have a generalized guide on turbocharger sizing with specific numbers in it. You have to know whether or not it's a straight six or a V8 because they seem to spool turbochargers differently. You have to know whether or not you're at sea level, high elevation, what injectors do you have, what's your tuning, what's your rear axle ratio. There are so many variables on turbocharger sizing that it is impossible to say with certainty that any particular size is the right one. What is the right turbocharger for you? Well, it's all what you're going for and specifically what you're using the truck for. If you are using it as a work truck and you want to use your stock transmission and supporting mods, a OEM plus style VGT turbo will give you more than enough power to blow things up. If you want to have the truck be simple and reliable, then sticking with a smaller fixed rate turbocharger will give you that simplicity, a little bit less throttle response on the bottom, but the same amount of peak power that you'll get out of a stock VGT or even a slightly modified VGT. You'll have to drive it a little bit differently. Compound chargers are literally your cake and eat it too. You can have everything you want, you pay for it. A big single turbocharger is probably the most entertaining because it's so much fun when they get on top of charge. They take a lot to get going. You have to drive them and you are specifically paying attention to what you're doing. You can't just floor it on the highway. But when you master it, especially on launches, wow, does it feel good. It's a lot of fun. Basically a big turbocharger makes it a toy more than a tool. And that's fine. What's right for you is all depends on what your truck is to you. Is it a tool, is it a toy, or is it a mix of both? And what's your budget to put at it? We hope this gave you a little bit more information on each of the turbocharger systems, when and why you would use them. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to talk turbos every day.